Hi, I'm Sherry Mead from Sew LA in Los Angeles, and I'm here to tell you what your basic sewing kit should be made up of. First of all, I'm going to start with some scissors. When you sew, you have to have a nice clean edge to your fabric, and it's really important to use good sharp scissors to get that edge nice and clean and straight. So we really like the all metal scissors. 8 inch dressmaker's shears, keep them nice and sharp, and don't use them for anything other than fabric. They'll stay sharp for a really long time. They come in true left-hand varieties, which means that the blades are switched along with the grips. So if you cut with your left hand, these are the scissors that you're going to want. If you have bigger hands, then they make 10-inch scissors. These are pretty expensive. They're probably going to be the most expensive part of your sewing kit, but they're well worth the money. If you just don't have that kind of cash floating around, you can get a pair of less expensive scissors. Just be warned that they will get dull, and you won't be able to resharpen them at some point. You'll also need a pair of scissors specifically for paper. A cheap pair of office supply scissors will work just fine. Don't ever use your fabric shears on paper because it will make them a lot duller a lot faster. The next part of our basic sewing kit are glass head pins. So these are pins that have little balls on the end of them that are made out of glass instead of plastic. They're also very strong metal, so they don't bend too much when you're putting them in and out of your fabric. And they're very fine, which means they're very thin, so they won't damage your fabric when they go in and out of it. The glass head pins are important because a lot of the times we use the pins to hold fabric in place and we press right over it with an iron. And if you did that with your plastic headed pins, you'd get melted plastic all over everything. So glass head pins are pretty important. Um, you'll need to contain your pins. Personally, I like the magnetic pin cushions because if you spill your pins on the floor, then you can just suck them right up with your pin cushion, which is awesome. But there's also the traditional tomato. For me, when you're sewing, you have to pull your pins out and stop what you're doing to stick the pin in the tomato. And that small action repeated several hundred times while you're sewing takes up enough time that I'm willing to spend a little bit more money to get a magnetic pin cushion because then I can just throw my pin at it and I don't have to worry about it. Another extremely important sewing tool is a seam ripper. I like the ones that have a big handle on them so that I can really hold on to them. And a really small pointy head here. Um, sometimes you'll see seam rippers that are gigantic with really thick blades. You don't really want those so much for garment sewing because the blades, it would be very hard to get them under your stitching. Uh, the sharp part is in the U right here, so when you slide the seam ripper under your stitch, it's more of a pushing action as opposed to sliding it under and pulling it up. You should replace these every couple of years because they tend to get dull. Um, when you get a new one, you'll be amazed at how easily it will cut through your stitches. You'll also need a tape measure. This one is a fiberglass tape measure, and that's really important because you don't want your tape measure to stretch out. This is how you get accurate body measurements to make the correct size of your pattern, and that's what you want for it to fit you. So we're gonna use this to take body measurements to pick our pattern size, and you want those body measurements to be accurate so that your project, after you've spent hours and hours sewing it, actually works for you. You're going to need a way to mark your fabric. So I have a couple different varieties of Taylor's chalk. My favorite are these chalk triangles. Um, it's a soft chalk, and you can use it in conjunction with your ruler to make nice straight lines on your fabric if you're making a hem. Um, it's not too hard, so you don't have to press too hard and muss up your fabric while you're doing it. These pencils are the same kind of chalk, and there's a couple here that are water soluble. So if you ever need to mark on the right side of your fabric, you can use these and it will come off with water. Um, I like the pencils because you can sharpen them, so you can get fine detail lines when you're marking things like darts or buttonholes. But I really like these and I use them the most. Um, you just don't want to use these on the right side of your fabric. Stick to the wrong side of your fabric. Uh, the darker chalks can stain a lighter fabric, so you want to be careful with those. Um, a 2 by 18 inch clear ruler. This kind of ruler is flexible because a lot of the times when we're sewing, we have to measure around curves. We're not androids. We have curves. So this is nice to be able to do that. And the grid, the two inch wide grid, really helps us out keeping things straight when we're marking. I also use this to make sure that my pattern is straight on my fabric when I'm sewing. So I use this with my grain line to make it straight on the fabric. A couple of other things that are seen on supply lists here and there. Um, a seam gauge is a little ruler here with a slidey bit on it, and it's used to do repeat measurements. So if I set it at the three inches here, then I can mark buttonholes using these 
little points like calipers without even really thinking about it. So I can do it nice and fast. It's also good if you've got a really curvy hem and you don't want to use a ruler to mark it, you can fold it up and check the hem with this guy the whole way around the hem. That's that guy. A point turner is how you get nice sharp points on a pillow or on collars or on a cuff. It's pointy enough to poke it out so it looks nice and sharp, but it's not too sharp so it doesn't poke through and make a hole in your project. Um, I like this particular kind because it's got a round end. So if you have a round collar, you can use this end to kind of get in there and smooth it all out. And you can use this end if you've got a little point. Don't use the tips of your scissors to do that with because you will poke right through the end of your fabric. I also use a tiny pair of snips. These are five inch sewing scissors. Um, they're really indispensable for cutting things like notches or trimming your seam allowances, trimming your threads. Very good tool to have. And the last thing on our list is a bodkin. So this is a tool that allows you to put elastic or a drawstring through a casing. Um, you clamp onto whatever you're gonna be drawing through the casing and slide this little ring down to clamp it. And then you use this blunt edge to feed it all the way through. So even if you don't sew and you have lots of yoga pants or hoodies, this is a very important tool for you to have in your kit. The bodkin is one of the oldest sewing tools. Um, it's dated back to when people had to be laced into their garments. Um, so way before zippers or buttons were invented, uh, the maid would be standing behind the lady and lacing her up the back of her gown with a bodkin. And it's also a medieval swear word, odds bodkin. So you can swear in medieval and no one will know what you're talking about. So these are all the things you're gonna need for your basic sewing kit, things that you'll use for pretty much every project. Um, if you'd like to find out more about how to use these items, you can check out my Creative Live classes. Click on the link below for more information.